Back with another episode in the video game collection series. Uh, tonight we're going to be talking about the uh, Sega Master System, Sega Genesis, and Sega CD games in my collection currently. So, just like all the other videos, I have previously done uh, collection videos You know, way back when my channel first started. Showed off the games I had then. Some of those games I don't own anymore. Um, some of them I've gotten rid of. I've got new games, obviously, that I've shown off, shown off in all the various pickup videos I've done over the years. Uh, but this is to catalog the current games in my collection, just in case something happens. We don't know. Anything can happen. The world is a strange place. Uh, so, yes, this is to show off exactly what I have currently in my collection, obviously. Uh, tonight, like I said, Master System, Genesis... Not going to be able to get to the Sega CD games tonight because way too many games in the freaking collection. Uh, so tonight we're going to get through the Master System games and the first half of my Genesis games. And then next Thursday we will finish off the Sega Genesis and then show off the Sega CD games. So yeah, don't want to lose my voice. Meeting up with some friends tomorrow with, from out of town. Uh, want to be able to actually hold a conversation with them without having to talk like Gary Busey. So let's get into it. First things first. Oh, Jason's here. And it surprisingly, this worked on the first try tonight. Unlike Tuesday when or Monday when it decided it did not want to work at all. Uh, but Sega Mo fucking Genesis, yes, it's happening tonight. It's going down. Let's get into it. Okay, so let's start off with the Sega Master System games. I have a nice stack here. I don't have as much uh, as Jason does, uh, but I got a decent stack and a lot of quality stuff I've picked up since. I want to say it was the third no it was the second mm, uh, mi god i can't talk the, th the second midwest gaming classic that i ever went to uh was when i decided you know what i'm gonna start buying sega master system games because i just gotten the retro freak there was gonna be an adapter coming out for it which i do now own that lets you play sega master system mk was it mark or mark a th 1,000 games, and uh, J uh, Sega's, Sega Game Gear games, and I was like, well, you know, I had a Master System back in the early 2000s, uh, I always talked about how my uncle had one that he had bought back when it first came out, so that when, like, the family would come over for holidays or whatever, uh, the kids would have something to do in the basement while the adults could stay upstairs and drink, and uh, chit-chat, you know, about their adulty things. Uh, we would be in the basement playing the Master System, and uh, there's a couple of games in this stack here that were the ones that I fell in love with at my uncle's house. Um, but let's get into these Master System games. Um, it's not a console that I ever had back in the day. The first time I ever had one of these was in, I say, the early 2000s. I bought my first Sega Master System, and I had a whole lot of great games. I ended up selling them all when I lost my job in 2011, uh, but getting a lot of them back. Uh, one of them is Alex Kidd High Tech World. Got this from Nintendo. He was pi uh, paring down his collection. I picked it up from him. According to the back of this, it's the third game in the series. Uh, I have never played an Alex Kidd game before. This is the first one I think I've ever owned. And it's a side-scrolling platformer, but this one seems more like an adventure game because it sounds like you're trying to get to an arcade. You have to find like pieces of a map to tell you how to get there. And... There's a password system. Whatever. I still haven't played it, which is sad, but whatever. Uh, this is Alien Syndrome. Uh, it's a port of an arcade game I used to love. It's very inspired by the Alien films, obviously. Even on the front cover, that thing looks like a freaking alien from one of those movies. Um, it's a top-down Legend of Zelda you know, view type of uh, shmup or a shooter. It's okay. The arcade game is great. Uh, this port is all right. It's really slow. I know it has like an FM audio option that we didn't get here in the U.S. I think you can unlock it if you have a Japanese uh, mass system. I think that's a, the Mark 1000 or whatever it's called or the Mark 3. I can't remember what it's called. Uh, but actually, the Tengen version of this that came out for the NES is probably, I think, the better version. Uh, bought this at the Midwest Gaming Classic this year, uh, Aztec Adventure. It's another, like, top-down Legend of Zelda type of view game. 
Um, I tried it out when I was capturing footage for my Midwest Gaming Classic 2019 video, and I did not like it all that much. I might get rid of it at some point. I do not know. Here's the game that I fell in love with at my uncle's place, Black Belt. It's a side-scrolling, action, beat-em-up style game. It's kind of like playing Kung Fu, but you're out in the open and not in a, in a building. Uh, it's actually a Hakuto no Ken game, a Fist of the North Star game that was way toned down here for the U.S. because in the uh, Japanese version, you punch people and their heads explode. And I think there was blood as well. Here, you punch people and they just kind of break apart into blocks. It's kind of silly. But I actually love this game. I like it a lot. Still do. Probably the best port of Choplifter you're ever going to get. Uh, I used to play this on my dad's computer, my his Atari, what was it called? Atari 800XL. Back in the day, we had a cartridge of this, and I played it all the time. Uh, you play as this helicopter, and you have to rescue uh, hostages behind enemy lines. You have to destroy tanks and all these other kind of vehicles that are trying to shoot you down out of the sky. Rescue the hostages and be able to get back to your base to drop them off without dying in the process. Because if you die, they die. It's really fun. Uh, here is Cloudmaster. It's a side-scrolling or a horizontal-scrolling shmup where he plays this little kid on a cloud. I picked this up when I was out game hunting with Captain Algebra. Uh, was it last December? And it's actually really, really fun. Uh, I almost bought this at that Midwest Gaming Classic when I made the decision to start buying Master System games. Uh, was it Matt? I can't remember his last name. Matt has a... This guy named Matt that I've, I've seen every single year that I've been there has a table. He had a table that year. He had this on his table. I chose against getting it because I was like, well, I already bought like four Master System games. I can't even play them yet because that adapter hadn't come out at that point. Uh, don't worry about it. I picked this up, I think, last year. It's Double Dragon, a port of the arcade game, and I think this... I haven't tried it yet. I keep on saying I need to play it, and I haven't. I don't know if this one's actually any good. Master System love. I love the Master System. Um... I kind of wish that it did take off here in the U.S. as well as it did, like, in Brazil and in uh, Japan and all that, because there were some great games, and there were a lot of ports or, of, like, Genesis games that came out for the Master System that were really good. Um, but Double Dragon, I I don't remember if people told me this one was good or not. If anyone's played Double Dragon, I have, like I said, I haven't tried it out yet. I keep on saying I'm going to play it, and I haven't. Uh, let me know if it's better than the NES port. Here's a weird one. Uh, Fantasy Zone The Maze. Picked this up when I was hanging out with Captain Algebra also last year. It's like if you were to take Fantasy Zone and transplant it into a Pac-Man type puzzle, uh, maze game. It's okay. Um, I like the fact that they were branching out with the Fantasy Zone, but honestly, I would just like another real Fantasy Zone game. Why can't Sega make a Fantasy Zone 3 for current gen consoles? Can you imagine what that would be like? I would be thrilled beyond belief. Okay, here's a weird one. Okay, so... Uh, this is a reproduction I got from my friend uh, at Toysaurus Games. I think this was the only Master System reproduction he ever made, and he only made a certain amount of them. And it's because, essentially, the Game Gear is a portable Master System, just with, like, a, I guess, a, a dumbed-down sound chip. And uh, so, I guess Game Gear games can be ported over to the Master System pretty easily, since I guess they same, they share the same architecture. Uh, so this one was really easy to transplant into a Master System cartridge, and it's called GG Alesta 2. It's a horse or a vertically scrolling shmup, and I, it's a super expensive game if you want to get it for the Game Gear. But uh, and I don't think this even came out over here in the U.S. I think it was a Jap uh, Japanese exclusive. Uh, but getting it to play on the mass on the uh, Master System, yes, please. And I tried it out; it is fantastic. The only way I can get this to work because it would not work on my retro freak the retro freak sometimes does not like reproductions uh the only way i was able to get this one to work was to take the adapter that i had bought for my retro freak that lets me play all these master system games and plug it into my genesis and it works as a power base converter that way and it played perfectly fine so can't play this on my retro freak in hd sad to say but i do use the uh, retro tink to play my cdx so I can play it in sort of HD, like upscaled HD, uh, that way, which is great. It's a fantastic shmup. I played this, and I also downloaded the first game in the series, uh, a ROM of it, that I played on the Retro Freak, and damn, that, those games are awesome. They are so much fun. 
Okay, here's a weird one, too. Um, I guess toward, towards the beginning of the Master System's life, they were not only releasing cartridges, but cards. Like little credit, ca credit card-sized cartridges. Uh, that would slip in and out of the front of the Master System. And I, they discontinued it, I'd say, pretty early in the uh, lifespan of the console. I don't know if it was just too difficult to to make or if people just weren't buying them. or I don't know what their thought process was behind having two different cartridge types for one console. It doesn't really make a whole lot of sense because that could be very confusing for parents who don't understand these types of things. And they're like, well, I thought they were cartridges. Why are these little cards? What do these cards do? I mean, what are they? But whatever. I, like I said, I think they discontinued them pretty early on in the console's lifespan. Oh, crap. These things. I hate these stupid things. Uh, I do like the way they bounce around in the case. Uh, but I got Ghost House. Um, it's a platformer where he plays a little vampire child. What is up, 8-Bit Glitch? How's it going? Showing off a little bit of the Sega love today, as Jason puts it. Um, or right now it's the Master System love. Uh, but it's a, yeah, it's a platformer, I think he plays a little vampire child, and there's like a lot of horror type characters running around, I know Dracula's running around in this house, uh, it's very, okay, it's okay, uh, it's, yeah. out of all the games I have on the cards, I think only one of them is something that I can say that I genuinely think is really good, uh, what's her name, or oh no, um, Church, of, uh, Game Grinder, absolutely loves this game, and so do I, I was hanging out with him, last year at the Midwest Gaming Classic in 2018, and he was looking for a copy of this game because he wanted to play it so bad. I had actually gotten this off of eBay, I think, a little bit so a little bit earlier than the Midwest Gaming Classic that year. But it's Golvelius Valley of Doom. Um, it's like a Legend of Zelda clone, but a really good one. The art style is fantastic. You can kind of see on the back here this snake character. And it's just very cartoony. The graphics are very cartoony, but it's a lot of fun. Uh, I think Hungry Goraya also streamed that this year sometime. Um, is this the one that I wasn't a fan of? Yes, I think so. Ken Sidon. It's a side-scrolling sort of beat-em-up. He plays this uh, samurai guy running around killing everybody. It's okay. The characters are really large, or the sprites are really large. It's not that fun. Um, if this is the one I'm thinking of, because I got two of these, two games that, yes, this is the one that I did not think that was great. The next one, the one that's coming up is the one that I liked. Uh, yeah, I got two beat em ups at the same time off of eBay, and they showed up on the same day. I played them both back to back, and I was like, eh, this one, no. The other one, ah, uh, yes. Uh, you'll see it when I get there. Uh, but yeah, this one did not impress me too much. This one, I'm not sure if it is a North American release, or if, well, it talks about Mega Drive on here. Or if this is a PAL release, because it's got French on the back. I'm not sure. But it's a port of Lemmings, and it works on my uh, Retro Freak. I think this is a PAL one, because the mat, the um, instruction booklet is uh, one of those long ones. Um, but yeah, Cygnosis. Want to get all the Cygnosis games, you know, as many as I can. It's one of my goals. Not doing videos about it anymore. I'm just mixing them into the normal pickup videos. But it is one of my goals to get as many games by Cygnosis as I possibly can. Um, but it's a decent port. It plays pretty well. Uh, I, I kind of wish you had more buttons, but, you know, the Master System controller only has two. And this thing is snapping in half. I might have to get a new uh, case for this. Ooh, it's falling apart. Uh, here is a... It says it's an adventure role-playing game. This is just more of a, an adventure game. It's Lord of the Sword, uh, side-scrolling. There's a little bit of platforming. It's kind of like playing Castlevania a little bit. But it's a lot of fun. I really enjoyed this one. Yeah, this is a flat-out RPG. Uh, we got Miracle Warriors, Seal of the Dark Lord. Uh, I haven't played it a whole lot, but it is, you know, a RPG of the time. You know, we got the little window to show you where you're, where you're going. You got your stats, you got your characters, all that stuff. And it's pretty decent from what I remember playing. I haven't put a whole lot of time into it. I probably should. Uh, got my vacation coming up for Christmas this year, so I'm going to be playing a lot of these retro games that I have been putting off playing for the longest time. See, this one has that little case that the cards come in. Uh, here's another one of those card games. This one's My Hero. It's a beat-em-up, really cartoony. Like, I'm, I was talking about, like, the cards come in these, like, slip cases, like the, uh, uh TurboGrafx-16, and, uh, a lot of the ones... I think this is the only one I have that actually has one. Uh, but it's... Not that great. Uh, I captured footage of it when I did my review of the Master System adapter thing, the GG adapter for the Retro Freak, 
and this is one of the games I was talking about, or I showed off when I was talking about the card games and how they worked on it, and it's not that much fun. It's actually kind of shitty. Here's the beat 'em up that I loved when I was playing, um, when I got consigned in, and that's the Ninja. <laughs> this one is fantastic. It's like a, is this the top down one? Yes, this is the top down beat 'em up game. Uh, it's fantastic. I really, really like this one. Here's a puzzler. It's kind of like playing Pengo, I think that was called. It was Penguin Land. Uh, it's all right. I picked this one up. I think at the same. I think that showed up the same time as the Ninja and Consident did. Actually, there was like a point in time where I was just like on a Master System kick. That's where like a lot of these games came from. I bought like a whole shitload of them at the same time. I was like, you know what? My Master System uh, collection needs to uh, get a little bit bigger. Let's do this. Uh, this one was one of the games that was on my list at the third Midwest Gaming Classic that I went to. So this was the one in 2017. It was the first one where I met Church. The first time I was on a panel, I had a list of games that I wanted to pick up at the Midwest Gaming Classic in 2017, and I found every single game that I was looking for, which surprised the hell out of me. This was the only one that was really, really expensive, and, uh, just because I, when the guy, I was standing in front of the dude who was selling it, and I kind of hesitated to pull the trigger on it, and he, like, in, in, like immediately dropped $15 off of the price and to, to get me to buy it, because it was, yeah, it was Sunday that year. Yeah, I only went on Sunday that year. And he, I, you know, they don't, they don't want to drag all these games back to their, uh, to their house or their store or whatever. You know, they brought them there to sell. They want to sell them. So he gave me a deal. That's Fantasy Star, the first in the long series of these RPGs. Um, I now, I have all of the Fantasy Star games right now. And I do need to set aside time to play through them, even though they're long as shit. And the third one kind of sucks. But yes, this is the one that started it all. But the cool thing about this one is is there's stuff that this game does that you wouldn't think a Master System would be able to do. Because I know the Nintendo could not do, like, the way you move through the dungeons, and it's like that 3D first-person view. And the way it scrolls and moves around, it's like, I know the NES could not handle that, but the Master System could. But other times, the Master System looks like garbage. Like, if you compare what uh, Smash TV looks like for the Master System and the NES, the NES one blows it away. But, like, something like this kicks the shit out of every other RPG that's been on the NES. What? Yeah, it, it's true. This is one of the games I picked up when I decided to get into Master System Collecting at the Midwest Gaming Classic, and that was 2016. Uh, Rambo First Blood Part 2. Uh, this is a Commando clone uh, with the Rambo license slapped onto it, which I don't mind because I like licensed games. Not bad. Tired as hell. Been a couple... Oh, you guys are chit-chatting. Uh, it's pretty fun. It's all right. There's Rambo 3 also for the Master System, but that one I think is a light gun game. I don't know if you can actually play it with a controller outside of the if you don't have a light gun like I don't, because I don't have a CRT to use it on. Uh, this one I got off of, I think I got this from Nintendo also, I cannot be sure. But it's Rampage. Rambo 3 is the light gun? Yes, uh, I knew one of them. I couldn't remember if it was the Genesis one or not. Hang on a second. That's good. Um, yeah, but Rampage, I had the NES Rampage when I was a kid. I got it for Easter, whatever year it came out. And I had played the arcade a lot because they had it at the local bowling alley where my mother was on a league. I was on a league there also, so I used to play the crap out of it. And I was not a big fan of it, of the uh, NES port. The Sega Master System port, on the other hand, is like almost arcade perfect. I mean, not perfect perfect, but more closely resembles the game. Uh, the graphics are better, the sound is better, the play control is better. Uh, you got all three of the characters. So, yes, I highly recommend Rampage if you're looking for a little bit of that for your retro consoles. Also, we got Rustan. That's a, it's a port of an arcade game. I used to play this at the local Euro place. It was a little Greek restaurant we used to go to all the time when I was a kid. They had this in the front uh, by the uh, entrance. And I used to pop quarter after quarter into this while we'd be waiting for our food to show up. And it's a side-scrolling action game slash beat 'em up. Uh, it's uh, you pl it's almost like playing a Conan game. Really great. It's awesome. And the music is super catchy, super catchy. Here's a classic Shinobi, port of another arcade game by Sega. Um, there's also the port to the NES from Tengen, which is not all that great because this one actually has those first-person segments that were like that would you'd get between the levels where you'd be throwing the shurikens at the ninjas that'd be popping out. Uh, like of the buildings and all that in the background, uh, and it plays a lot better. 
So, Shinobi, that's another winner. Had an eye out for Rastan for a bit. It's the Conan game we deserved. Yes, because the Conan game we got for NES was doo-doo because it was developed by Mindscape. It was actually ported over from a, another game that came out for the Commodore 64 that was not a Conan game. Mindscape was garbage. Garbage. Okay, so I've been watching Sir HC Man stream this on Twitch for the longest... Well, he's been playing for like the last... Maybe the last month. Uh, but it's called Spellcaster. And it looks like, on the surface, it looks like a side-scrolling action slash beat em up style game. Uh, that's only part of it. The real meat of the game takes place in like an RPG type situation, kind of like with Miracle Warriors, where you got that little window that shows you what you're looking at. Um, and you, there, it's like uh, an adventure game also, because there's like uh, clues you have to find. and Kind of like playing Shadowgate, I guess, is a cl another close... Uh, approximation of what it's like so it's these two very strange things i mean two great things that are mixed together that you would not expect to be mixed together so it makes for a very unique game and watching him play it was frustrating because a lot of it is a lot of trial and error and some things are very vague the translation is not very good but i mean it's an interesting concept for a game i really liked what i saw and i was like you know what i'm so glad i own that game because i would like to play that so you got Rastan Saga 2 for Genesis. Everyone tells me Rastan 2 for two for the Genesis is garbage. Yeah, everyone whines about how bad it is because the graphics are so lame. But whatever, I haven't played it, so I can't say. I right, got Thunderblade, which is another port of an arcade game. Um, they vertically, no, this yeah, vertically scrolling shmup as a helicopter. Uh, part 2, or Super Thunderblade or whatever, is the one that's behind the chopper, so it's kind of 3D. Uh, but this is the original, and it's okay. My friend Jason, uh, the moment I posted a picture of the games that I got, whatever week I got this one, um, he saw the picture and he was like, that game right there, that's my childhood. It's called Time Soldiers. Uh, this one is kind of like playing uh, Alien Soldier, or not Alien, Jesus, what am I talking about? Like playing Alien Syndrome a little bit. Uh, but it's another uh, clone of like Commando, but it's a sci-fi version. And you're going through all these different time periods, killing dinosaurs and everything, and then eventually robots. <laughs> it's okay. I enjoy it. Uh, here's the Sega card game that I really like, and it's Transbot. This is the other game that I fell in love with at my uncle's place when he got that uh, Master System for all the kids to play. Uh, and this was the pack-in game for the Sega Master System, I guess, towards the, at the very beginning. This is what you would get. And I always liked this one because Transformers was huge at the time, and I was huge into the Transformers, so obviously I was going to be into this. Because it's a, a horizontally scrolling shmup where you play as a robot that can transform into a, like a spaceship, and it, you can shoot, shoot people in you know both uh, forms. And on the back, you can see there's a ATST. <laughs> in the game that's a boss or something uh the only thing that ticked me off about when i bought this off of ebay was the fact that the guy never showed off the back of the case and when i called him on it he was like sorry all sales final it's because he had cut off the barcode i guess there was a trade-in deal or something he cut the barcode off i was like you son of a bitch <laughs> so if anyone has a spare slip for Transbot that they're not using, send it my way. Uh, pick this up at, of all places, Half Price Books. To find complete mega, or, uh, uh, Master System games at a Half Price Books, like what? And it's Wonder Boy of all games? Holy crap. I used to play this in the arcade all the time when I got Hudson's Adventure Island on the NES. I had no clue that it was a port of this, or like a, a, a clone of this that Hudson had licensed from Sega to make their own game. They just changed some of the sprites. But this is the original one. It's a side-scrolling platformer. If you've played Adventure Island, which I know most of you have, it's the exact same game. And it's pretty good. I like it a lot. It is a classic. Uh, here's an RPG uh, for a very long-running series. I do believe this is the first game in the series, and that's Ease Vanished Omens. I have Ease Book 1 and 2 for the Sega... Or not the uh, Sega. The um, TurboGrafx CD. And uh, kind of makes this one moot because that is a great you know version of the game. Uh, but I also kind of wanted it for this because I'm a huge Ease fan, so why not? And then we got a two for the last two games I have for the Master System. We got Zillion and Zillion to the Triformation. Uh, they're adventure, side-scrolling adventure-style games, 
The first one's more of an adventure game. The second one's got like a lot of shmuppy things where you're like riding around on this motorcycle and you're it's like uh, uh, auto scrolling shmup. It's okay. The first one's where it's at. It's kind of like playing Impossible Mission if you remember that one. Uh, I think it came out for the NES, but it was like a it was like a, a Commodore 64 game I think. It's more like that. This one's more of an adventure game. This one's got like shmup stuff going on. Hey, what's up, Kamui? How's it going? Thanks for the like, sir. I appreciate it. Everybody, of course, welcome to the stream that hasn't uh, checked in in the uh, chat yet. Okay, so that's it for Master System. That shit's done. Now we're getting into the Genesis. And like I said, I have so many Genesis games that I had to split this video in half. <clears throat> because I'm not talking about uh, 150 Sega Genesis games in one video. If that's how many I have. Let me see how many I have. It's in my app here. Let me see real quick. Sega Master System, Sega Genesis. I have a total of 164 CIB games for the Sega Genesis. Not gonna do that. Gotta split that up. Gotta take it easy on the throat. Okay, let's get into it. Okay, talking about those Cygnosis games, had to have three ninjas kick back. I do not understand why this game is so expensive. Uh, it's a licensed game for, for starters, and you know how people think about licensed games. Uh, it's a game based on Three Ninjas Kick Back. Not the hottest license out there, obviously. I think a game that was based on Three Ninjas at Thunder Mountain or whatever it was, the one that had Hulk Hogan in it, would probably be a better license than this one. This is the second movie, I think. And, uh, yeah, it's really expensive, and I ended up getting a deal on it. But it's a Cygnosis joint. It's a side-scrolling platformer slash beat-em-up based on the movie. Never seen the movie, so I cannot tell you if it follows the plot of the movie at all, but it's okay. It's not the greatest thing ever. <clears throat> so if there's one console that I have a lot of repros for, it is the Sega Genesis. I have a ton of repros for this console. There are a lot of games that came out in Japan we never got that were fantastic. <clears throat> Definitely not all winners are CIB. Yeah, a lot of mine aren't winners either. They're, they might be winners to me, but uh, not to a lot of other people. Uh, but... This is one of the ones I got from, oh, what was that name of that company that I got? It was on Etsy. Uh, something Arcade, the Toy Arcade or something like that, whatever. Uh, this is called Advanced Buster Hawk Glay Lancer. This is a uh, horizontally scrolling shmup, and it is absolutely fantastic. The graphics, the music, the gameplay are awesome. <clears throat> um, and I absolutely love this game. I... Capture some footage of this when I was talking about the uh, playing games. When I did my review of the Retro Freak. This is what the game I used for my example of playing a repro on the console. And for some reason this one works. And I think it's because it is a legit... It's based on a legit Ma Mega Drive game. You know, it was just ported over into a different cartridge that'll actually work on our uh, Genesis over here. Uh, but it works on the repro... On the uh, clone consoles. I cannot talk. Today was a very long day. I am tired as hell. I actually got home from work today, and I came over here, started watching videos on YouTube, and I fell asleep in my chair like an old man. And I did not wake up until about 45 minutes before this stream was supposed to start. <laughs> That's why I'm the old-ass retro gamer. Afterburner 2, port of the arcade game. You know, obviously you know what it is. Behind the plane. Shmup. Classic. I've been trying to get all the original... Mass, or uh, Sega Genesis games, like the ones that came out toward the beginning, they were like a lot of arcade ports. I still need to get like Space Harrier 2. I have I have a few of those, uh, but I'm really looking forward to those right now. Like, I don't know why, but I'm looking for like the oldest Genesis games that are out there. Uh, classic, we got Disney's Aladdin. Um, I actually prefer the Super Nintendo version, but the Genesis one is fantastic as well. The animation is great. Um, all the ones that came out for the Genesis, the Disney games, were usually pretty good. The only one that I can legit say was garbage was Fantasia, and I will not own a copy of that. I did back in the day, and I fell for that shit. Not gonna fall for it again. That game is garbage. Uh, but Aladdin is fantastic, uh, side-scrolling platformer, music just like in the movie and all that. Here's... Okay, so Jason just got this in his, uh, one of his, um, uh, Video Games Monthly boxes, I think it was. And I love this game. Uh, I went out, like, I went scouring my video game stores when this game came out. Like, the weekend it came out, I was going everywhere trying to find a copy of it. Because I'm a huge fan of this license. And to and we I don't think we ever got a game based on this license before this one. At least in the North America. I know there was a game that came out based on the second film for the Commodore 64. My friend Charlie had that. 
But, like, we never had a console one. I know there was one in, in Japan for the Famicom, which is poop. But I'm talking about Alien 3. I love this franchise. Not the fourth movie, but... I love this franchise. And to have an Alien game on my Sega Genesis, this was this came out before the Super Nintendo one and the Game Boy one and all that. Uh, this was the original one. I absolutely love it. Um, it's a side-scrolling platformer slash adventure game. You play as Ripley, uh, and you're looking for all the prisoners that have been cocooned. You have to rescue them before the time runs out in this like maze-like, you know, the, the whole prison planet thing. And uh, you have to save them before the time runs out and the chest bursters bust out of their chests and the game's over. Um, the only thing is it doesn't follow the rules set in the movie at all. In the movie, it was like, it's Ripley and a bunch of male survivors that are really horny. There are no weapons on the planet and there's one alien loose and nobody has any way to fight it. So in this one, it's like, let's start Ripley off uh, with every weapon imaginable from all the other movies, especially from aliens. you got a flamethrower, a grenade launcher, a machine gun, <laughs> and uh, grenades. And uh, there's five million aliens running around on the planet instead of just the one. But, you know, how are you going to make a game based on the situation, you know, set up in the movie? You can't. So they had to make changes. I didn't mind. I was just happy to be playing a game that was based on aliens. Uh, even everyone hates Alien 3, the movie. I absolutely love it. Um, but fantastic game. I love the music. And it's a very fun game, at least for me. Not all winners. I do not have Android Assault. Uh... After watching Captain Algebra play it, well, Android Assault, isn't that a Sega CD game? Oh, I do have it. It's for the Sega CD. Um, here's another repro. I am so surprised that this one did not come out here in the U.S. after I found out who made it, who developed it. Don't ask me. I don't know. It's called Alien Soldier. This one was developed by Treasure. Uh, Treasure is one of my favorite developers. Uh, they started up on the Genesis. They were a bunch of ex-Konami employees that decided to you know, branch off and make their own company and do their own thing. Their games are very unique. Usually Alien Soldier is no different. Um, this one is a side-scrolling shoot-em-up slash beat-em-up, or like a run-and-gun. Uh, you play as this alien bird creature, and you have like all these different weapons at your disposal to begin with, and you have to get from point A to point B, and it's 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 like boss rush the game. It is absolutely crazy i am so surprised we did not get this over here it is fantastic if you have not played alien soldier get on that here's another one of those early sega genesis games that i was talking about i've been trying to get as many of these as i can recently that's alien storm this is basically sci-fi golden axe it's a it's a beat em up uh i think you can do three well i think on well, the arcade would have been three players but here you can do two players simultaneously and there's and uh you know, it plays just like Golden Axe, just with, you know, sci-fi sci -fi stuff. But there's also like a, uh, uh, like a light gun game, mini game in it also. It doesn't require a light gun. Uh, yeah, it says, fight from two different perspectives, including a 3D view into the screen. Uh, based on an arcade game, and it's actually really fun. I like it a lot. It's just weird. The one girl has like a whip as her weapon, and it does not, it's not very effective. Uh, here's like the pack-in game that came with the Genesis back in the day. Uh, Altered Beast, great arcade game, used to play the crap out of it all the time. This game is very, very faithful to it. It is very close. It's not perfect. Uh, I played the crap out of the arcade game, so I, like when I finally got around to playing this, I was like, that's almost there. We're getting there. You know, we're not quite at the arcade perfect yet, but we're getting there. But uh, it's a classic game. I uh, picked this one up in a lot. I, no, I got this at the, uh, the uh, exchange. I remember I walked into the exchange, and they never usually had... CIB uh, Genesis games for sale. Uh, they always had just the loose ones. They finally had one that was complete, and I was like, "Well, might get. It. I have to get it while it's here." And that's Animaniacs. I don't think that this is the same game that came out for the Super Nintendo. I think they're separate games. I don't know if they were both made by Konami either. I cannot be certain. But it's a side-scrolling platformer. It reminds me a little bit of the Lost Vikings, uh, where you kind of have the three main characters, and they each have different abilities, and you have to combine them to get through the levels. It's actually pretty cool. All right, no problem, dude. Uh, talk to you later, 8-Bit Glitch. Thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. I will talk to you later, sir. Got this at the very beginning when I got back into collecting uh, video games again. And I got this in a lot with a couple of other games. And it's Arch Rivals, the arcade game. It's uh, the precursor to NBA Jam. Uh, this was developed by the same guys who did, I th think, Mortal Kombat, if I'm not mistaken. Um, it's a little more cartoony. 
uh, and it's very violent because you can beat the crap out of people on uh, on the court. They had this as I had. They had the arcade game of this at the resort that my uh, my parents and I used to go to when I was a little kid in Michigan. It was called Sunnybrook Farm. They had our, uh, our yeah. They had Altered Beast, the arcade game, and they had this, and they had one other. I think it might have been X Men. I'm not certain. They had another one. I cannot remember. Uh, but this is the one I avoided playing because I'm not a sports game fan. But I watched other people play it and I thought it looked pretty fun. But it was just I was bad at them and I was not interested. I was just all about Altered Beast. Uh, so yeah, pick this up out of nostalgia. It's actually not too bad. I do not remember if that came out for the Super Nintendo or not. If it did, let me know. You had me at Golden Axe with aliens. <laughs> Jason, you had me at hello. <laughs> My throat is so dry, I might actually need to get up and get another iced tea. Just talked about this game in my Sega Genesis Diamonds in the Rough video, uh, Asterix and the Great Rescue. It's a very fun game based on a comic book series from France that nobody over here knows about. Uh, it's a side-scrolling platform puzzler. It's actually really good. I really like it. Otherwise, I wouldn't have talked about it in my Diamonds in the Rough video. Uh, we got Batman. And this one is also by Sunsoft, but it is not a port of the NES game. This is its own Batman game. It's totally different. It is also more of a beat-em-up than a, like, I don't know what you would consider. Would you consider the Batman for the NES a platformer? I kind of do. And it also has, like, a little bit of the beat-em-up action. This one's more of just a straight-up beat-em-up. The graphics are really cool. And the funny thing is, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, this is not a port of the NES game at all. It is its own thing. Graphics are different. Gameplay, bosses, level design, everything is completely different. It's a new game. But on the back, they show port pictures from the NES game. Which I can imagine might have been pretty confusing back in the day. Which is why I didn't buy this, or I didn't ask for this back in the day. Because I was like, I got the game, which is obviously showing off right here. This is the first boss battle they're showing right here. Um, I was like, I already have it for the NES. Why would I want it for the Genesis also? Same with the uh, what I was talking about in the Diamonds in the Rough video for the Genesis. Uh, why would I want the Immortal for the Genesis when I already have it for the NES? So, yeah. NES, NES, that was it. Okay, I knew it was on a Nintendo console, but I do not remember if it was on the Sega or the uh, Super Nintendo or not. Okay, another uh, repro. I cannot remember the name of the company that I got these from off of Etsy. I don't even think they're on Etsy anymore. I think they have their own website now. Uh, Battle Mania 2 Troubleshooter Vintage. So, this is the second game in the series. We got the first one, I think, and it was known as Troubleshooter over here. This is the second one, and it's a lot better. This one is fantastic. It's like playing um, Forgotten Worlds, I guess, uh, where you play as, like, these characters that are, like, they have, like, a jetpack or something, and they're flying around, and you can shoot in all different directions. And uh, it's, a, it's an auto-scrolling game, kind of like, you know, it's a shmup. Uh, and it's really, really fun. It's really tough, but it's a lot of fun. I love it. Got this one at uh, Video Games Then and Now. Uh, no, no, no. I got this at Hat Price Books. That's where I got this one. Uh, I still haven't played it, though, which is kind of shitty. Uh, but it's called Battle Squadron. It's one of those Genesis games that comes in the cardboard box, so I have a box protector for it. Um, it's by uh, Electronic Arts, and it's a vertically scrolling shmup. And it, I was looking at the back of it while I was at the store, and I was like, you know, this one doesn't look half bad. Uh, did I get this at? I, I got a, I, no, I got, yeah, I got this one at Half Price Books. The other one that's coming up is the one I got. Okay, I'm getting so confused. Uh, but it's a lot of fun. Or it looked like a lot of fun. That's why I bought it. I haven't played it yet. Okay, so we also got a version of this for the Super Nintendo, I do believe. Uh, but I prefer this one. It's a Battle Mac. A game of armored combat. Uh, it's basically if you were to take uh, Desert Strike and drop a mech in it. It's the exact same game. It plays exactly the same. That's not a bad thing because I love those strike games. So can you imagine? It's great. It's awesome. I highly recommend it. Definitely a platformer. Always double dip on Batman. Well, if, like I said, if they had gotten the box art right, I definitely would have been like, hey, that's another Batman game. Let's do it. You know, but they, they effed that up. And the only way I found out about it was, I want to say down the line, somebody told me that it wasn't like the NES game at all, so that's when I decided to go after it. But, you know, or was it, no, I think I played it at Funko Land. I might have tested it at Funko Land. 
I think it was Sunny that worked at Funko Land was the one who told me that it wasn't anything like the NES game, and that's why I tried it out, and that's why I ended up buying it. So, Battletoads, you know, I'm all about the, I'm all about the rare. Uh, it's a port of the NES game, and yes, this is a port, unlike this, the Batman, which would lead you to believe that it is a port of the NES game. This is a port of the NES Battletoads. Done with better graphics, better sound, you would think better control. Uh, actually, I prefer everything about the NES game over this. Uh, yes, the graphics are better. Yes, the sound is better. But I like the graphic style of the NES game better. I like simple... Like, when you put all the different shading on the Battletoads, they just look weird. Uh, I like how simple they look in the NES game. The music, actually, to me, sounds better in the NES game. But it's not saying that it's a bad game, because it's the exact same game. It plays exactly the same, so you're going to get the same thing. You're still going to have the problem with the Turbo Tunnel. I am, like, one of the three people that does not seem to have an issue with the Turbo Tunnel. I can beat it on the first try. Uh, another Battletoads game. we got Battletoads and Double Dragon. Another game by Rare. Have to have all the Rare games. Uh, this came out like for every console out there. I think there's a Game Boy version of this. There, it's for the Super Nintendo. They have it for the NES. I think all of those are exactly the same. Uh, just depends on what console you're on. Like the graphics or the sound might be better. Uh, this was actually really fun. I think this one is the harder of the Genesis. When you want to con uh, compare the Super Nintendo and the Genesis one, I think the Genesis one is harder. Swear to me, I don't have throat cancer. <laughs> but it's another beat 'em up, just like. Uh, Battletoads. Uh, this one just has d uh, Double Dragon characters into it. Pretty awesome. I always thought that was the weirdest matchup for a game. But then again, Trade uh, Trade West, who releases the Double Dragon games, you know, I guess they own the rights to Double Dragon for the home consoles. They're also the company that released Battletoads, you know, which was developed by Rare, so why not? You got these two licenses, do something with them. They weren't doing anything with Battletoads as, at that point in time. Uh, there's two there's two versions of this game also. They are both completely different. The one for the Genesis and the Super Nintendo. The Genesis one's the one to get. And that's uh, Beavis and Butthead. Uh, this one is kind of like an adventure game. Uh, it reminds me a lot of like a point and click style game uh, in certain areas. But it's, yeah, let's collect things. Let's do stupid things. Let's burp and fart and <laughs> a lot. <laughs> the Super Nintendo one is terrible. This one is really fun. I'm running out of space here. Uh, here's another really cool shmup of horizontally scrolling one, and it is called Biohazard Battle. I was going to talk about this in my Genesis uh, Diamonds in the Rough, but I think Metal Jesus talked about this one in his. And I did not want to feel, I did not want to come off as copying him, because I think there's at least one or two games that I did talk about in my video that were in his also. After I released it, I went back and watched his uh, Genesis like Hidden Gems video, and I was like, oh yeah, there's a couple of mine in there too. So I'm glad I didn't pick this one. So, it is actually really, really fun. Uh, it's like, um, instead of, like, fighting spaceships and stuff, you're fighting, like, mutant creatures and stuff. It's really cool. Here's one that I've been afraid to play. And I'll show you why. For some reason, Electronic Arts ported a lot of, like, really overly complicated, like, PC games to the Genesis. I don't know what they were thinking, some of these, like, I don't think port very well, which is why you need a manual that goddamn thick. What the hell? So I picked this up because it's based on a license I love, and when I picked it up, I was like, geez, this game is freaking heavy. I picked this up at uh, People Play Games when they were still open. It was one of the first games I bought from them when I started going there uh, when I got back into collecting. This is one of the first games I got from them. And I was like, oh, it's got an 8 meg uh, battery backup cart. I'm like, that's pretty cool. And I love the license. And I'm like, Jesus, this game is heavy as shit. Why? I open it up and boom. That's why. Uh, it's Buck Rogers Countdown to Doomsday Science Fiction Role Playing Game. Uh, it's one of those SSI ports that they were, uh, they, were doing, they were doing for a little while. And it's kind of like playing Ultima. And there's a little bit of, you know, sci fi outer space stuff too. I love Buck Rogers. I used to watch that show all the time when I was a kid, but having to, like, know what's going on in the game and this freaking, you know, short storybook to figure out how to play the damn game, I don't know. I don't know. It looks cool, though. It does. But this manual scares me. Got that one. What's up, ECM? You're, or e MC... MC Murr. Nah, I can't talk. 
Main event box talking. Main event box talk. I don't confession. The Sega Master System was the first system in 1990 when Sega stopped making hardware in 2001. A part of me died too. I really want to get emo- I really get emotional about Sega. I uh, one of the only consoles that I ever purchased on day one. Out of out of all the consoles that have ever been released, I've only bought two on day one. One of them was the Dreamcast, and that's why it is probably still my. It's my second favorite console of all time. Uh, I I I really loved Sega back then, uh, and I was sad when they decided to drop out. Thanks Microsoft. It's designed like the Gold Box AD and D games. Manual thick as fuck, bro. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy how thick that manual is. Like it, like I, this box is legit heavy because of it. Like it's, it's, it's like a short story. It's like the uh, the Hellbound Heart by Clive Barker inside that case. Two versions of this also released. One for the uh, Genesis and one for the Super Nintendo. Are there ports? There are two different ports of this arcade game. This is the good one. The Super Nintendo one is trash like garbage unplayable garbage captain america versus the avenger or captain america and the avengers there's also a version of this for the uh nintendo for the nes it's a completely different game it's like playing gi joe uh which is awesome i love that one too this one is the port of the arcade game a straight port and this one is the one that's just like the arcade game it has the voices and everything i love it great beat em up with uh you get to play as captain america hawkeye vision or iron man before iron man was a character people actually gave a crap about (laughs) <laughs> when the movies came out uh don't play the super nintendo version it was uh released by my uh mindscape that company that i cannot stand uh so back in the day what was it uh, software etc or was it electronics boutique i can't remember if it was software etc electronics boutique uh they had a uh a policy that if you bought a game regardless if you opened it and played it and whatever you had three days after you bought it to return it if you didn't like it and you could exchange it for something else so one day after work, this is when I was still working at Kmart because I, I think I was still in high school. Um, went to the local EB Games or like software, etc., whatever it was. Bought it, brought it home, played it for 15 minutes. Was like, what the hell is this? Because I was a huge fan of the arcade game. What the hell? This game is garbage. Oh, wait a minute. It's by Mindscape. That explains a lot. Brought it right back to the mall. Took it back to the store. Plopped it down on the counter. I'm like, give me something else. This game is garbage. And I ended up getting Cool Spot for the Super Nintendo instead. <laughs> but if you're going to get a, co- a version of this, this is the one to get. The Genesis one is all you need. Research is for immersion, so thick books is essential. <laughs> There's a couple of uh, the games that Electronic Arts released for the Genesis that have manuals that thick. I think I have at least one more that's like that. Or two. Maybe two. Talking about those awesome Disney games, we got Castle of Illusion starring Mickey Mouse. Uh, great platformer as Mickey Mouse. It's, you know, on the surface, looks like a little kid's game. In execution, it's, I mean, a kid could get into it. It's more complicated than, you know, a little kid could probably handle, I guess. Uh, but it's a fantastic platformer. I love the music, the graphics are really charming, and the play control is spot on. I love it. Starflight is thick. That's the other one I got. <laughs> <laughs> and I think the other one is Techno. What's it called? Techno Clash. That's for next year, next week's video. Uh, Castlevania Bloodlines. I don't have the clamshell case version. I have the cardboard one. They reprint. Uh, got this off of Facebook. I think it was my buddy Brian sold this to me, and he sold it to me pretty cheap when you consider how much this normally goes for. It's a fantastic Castlevania game. It's different. I mean, it's the same yet different. <laughs> it's like a natural evolution of this. You know what? You know, it took advantage of what the Genesis could do. Uh, so I was happy for that. And it felt like Castlevania. It just did different things. Did things a little bit differently. And it's amazing. I absolutely love this game. Highly recommended. I remember when it first came out for the Genesis. I remember at I was at the Funko Land. There was this one specific Funko Land I would go to, and the girl that worked there. She was like the manager. Her name was Sunny. She was the nicest person you'd ever meet in your life. She was so she if if you could if you would take the time to talk to her, she would do anything for you. Like I used to go there almost every day after work and just like test all the games that they had because you had test stations. Like they had Genesis set, they have Genesis set up, they'd have a Super Nintendo set up, an NES, any game that they had behind the counter that you wanted to play, you could play it before you bought it. And I would just play all the games because I wanted to see what was good and what wasn't. And I would chat to her the whole time I'd be doing that. And like. I would tell her what games I was looking for. This is before pre-orders were a thing. You know, I would tell her what games I was looking for, and the moment a copy of it would come in, like a used copy, she'd call me at home and say, Hey, Chris, 
Death and Return of Superman just came in. You want to come pick it up? Yes, I'll be right there. And um, where was I going with that? <laughs> there was some. I was getting. I was going somewhere with that story. Shit, I just lost my train of thought. I'll. It'll come back to me. <laughs> Oh, the uh, Castlevania. So I remember uh, I was at the Funko Land that Sonny worked at, and we were talking, and I saw Castlevania Bloodlines behind the counter, and I legit got mad. And I was like, that game has no, that series has no business being on a Sega console, ever. And she started laughing at me. She's like, uh, why are you so, uh, getting all worked up over a freaking video game? And I was just like, because that's Nintendo. That's, Nintendo is Castlevania. Castlevania is Nintendo. Has no business being on a Sega console. And then I played it, and I was like, I retract my previous statement. I want to purchase it immediately. <laughs> and I remember her just looking at me like, you're dumb. <laughs> uh, another game I tested at Funko Land. I bought it because I tested this Chican at Funko Land at Sunny's store. And uh, absolutely fell in love with it. Even though, like, the further you get in the game, it gets, like, really weird and complicated. Uh, especially when it comes to all the potions and stuff. But it's a platformer slash beat em up and I think it's really kind of cool. I mean, it's not, it hasn't aged well, that's for damn sure. But back when this first came out, I used to love it. I played the crap out of this all the time. The music is not good, I will say. This was one of those Genesis games that, okay, there was like a point in time when the Genesis was pretty popular, or it was like mid-lifespan mid of the Genesis, when... American companies were starting to make more games. Like, a lot of the games we were getting were coming from Japan. And the ones that were being made in America were just were not good. Because people didn't know how to program games for these consoles. Like, um, the Tur Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Tournament Fighters that came out for the Genesis was developed by Konami of America. The one that came out for the Super Nintendo and the NES were developed by Konami of Japan. And those games are like night and day. The Genesis one is, I think, trash. It, it is unplayable. The one that came out for the Super Nintendo is amazing. I haven't played the NES one, but I hear that one's pretty goddamn good too. But it's like if, if a game was developed by an American company during these days, it was usually like 90% 90, 90 was not going to be good. Shikan was one of those games. I actually liked it for that you know reason alone. I thought it was like not bad as everyone was making it out to be. I enjoyed it. Talk about this in my uh, Diamonds in the Rough for the Genesis. That's Championship Pro-Am. It's a port of RC Pro-Am from the NES over to the Genesis. By Rare! They ended up porting, like, how many of their games that came out for the NES over here? They didn't do Snake, Rattle, and Roll, that's for damn sure, or Solar Jetman. <laughs> but it's a great port of RC Pro. If you love it, better graphics, better sound, better everything. Here's a homebrew. Uh, I think this got kickstarted. It was either Kickstarter or Indiegogo. That was the only way you can get this at first. Eventually, the company opened up a website, and you can just purchase it there, which is what I did. Uh, it's Coffee Crisis. God, the, the light is just killing me over here uh coffee crisis it is a beat -em up made with modern technology for an old console and it's actually pretty cool this does not play on my retro freak at all uh i have to play this on my cdx uh which i'm not complaining you know because i have the retro tink so i can upgrade it to play on my 4k tv which isn't a bad thing but it's a fantastic beat -em up it's an old school game with modern sensibilities i like it and I have this just for shits and giggles, but I do not understand why this guy is on the cover. Uh, it's Columns 3. I know we got Columns. I don't know where Columns 2 went, but we got Columns 3, and it's not by Sega. It's by Vic Takai. Uh, but who is this dude sitting on the cover? I do not know. Uh, but it's a puzzle game. It's like Tetris with jewels. Gotta have at least one Columns game in your collection. Okay, so I was talking how Treasure is ex-Konami employees that broke off and did their own thing, and their games are freaking awesome. Well, this game is Konami's response to Treasure, and they try to out-treasure Treasure. <laughs> it's like Inception. Uh, it's a <laughs> it's Konamception. Uh, it's Contra Hardcore. Uh, this is Konami trying their hardest to like copy what Treasure was doing, because this is basically Konami's version of uh, Gunstar Heroes. <laughs> with the Contra license on it. It's like Boss Rush the game. It It is it is very Treasure-esque as far as I'm concerned. And that's not a bad thing. This is actually a fantastic game. Uh, Captain, I always tease Captain Algebra when he's streaming. Like when he like beats a game too early in his stream. And he's like, okay, now what do I do? And I always say, no Death Run Contra Hardcore. And he gets really pissed at me. Uh, but I actually I love this game. It's 
I I have a problem memorizing patterns, like especially when it comes to like the entire game, expects you to memorize patterns for everything. I can memorize certain ones. I cannot memorize everything. So watching Captain Algebra play this was actually pretty impressive because he memorized basically the whole game. And uh, I can't do that. So this game can be pretty tough for me. But I'm pretty sure if I sank some extra time into it, I could be get, I could get pretty good. Uh, this is another game I used to play all the time back in the day. Excuse me, just throat's going dry. Got a little bit of the crew ball. Motley crew pinball people. Uh, my friend Charlie had this. I do not remember if he was a huge Motley Crue fan or not. Um, I wasn't. Uh, but I, you know, he had this. I played it at his house, and I fell in love with video pinball with this one because I remember the only uh, video pinball game I had was Pinball for the Atari 2600 and I think maybe Midnight Madness on my dad's computer. So I was not a big fan until I played this. This is the one that got me into playing video pinball because the, the table was very well laid out. And it had, like, digitized versions of, uh, or bit tune versions of Motley Crue songs. I think it says, was it Dr. Feelgood, Home Sweet Home, and Livewire? And I knew the songs because I would hear them on the radio. So it was kind of cool to have something familiar playing in the background while you're playing it. And you also had that character, that Dr. Feelgood character that I think was on the co album cover. It's actually a really good game. I know a lot of people give this game crap. Like, on Sonic Spinball, they gave that game crap, too. I love Sonic Spinball. Shut up. <laughs> so how's everyone doing this evening? Uh, got another licensed game. Got this at Half Price Books. It's Dick Tracy. Uh, the best Dick Tracy game you're ever going to play. Because the one on the NES is doo-doo. Um, this one is a... It's a shmup. It's a weird kind of shmup. Uh, you can kind of see it on the back here. You play from behind... If I can actually find where my finger is. There it goes. You actually play from behind Dick Tracy in the foreground. There's characters that are driving by on the street. There's characters in the background. And you basically have your Tommy gun and you just... Mow characters down in the background. <laughs> so it's kind of like an auto-scrolling shmup. Sometimes you're hanging on the back of a car and you're shooting other people in cars and all that. And there's also people that are on your level that you can actually shoot, you know, with your gun as well. And you have to dodge their bullets. But a lot of the stuff comes from the background. You have to, like, turn around and shoot everybody in the background with your, uh, your uh, Tommy gun. It's a really fun game. I love this one. Uh, I've played the NES game... And that's one of those games I will probably never buy for the NES because that game is crap. I don't know why I still own this one. Uh, DJ Boy. It's a beat-em-up where you play as a kid on roller skates, like going down Sunset. What is it? Uh, not Muscle Beach. What's that big... That What's that beach in California that everyone roller skates down or rollerblades down? I can never remember the name of it. Um, the reason I'm kind of like, uh, on this game is I've got this Genesis version of this arcade game. Uh, before I played the arcade game. And I was like, oh, this is actually pretty cool. And then Logan Arcade opened up down the street. And I went over there, and they had the arcade version of this and the sequel. It's like Something Something Boys. B, B Street Boys or something? The so These games have, like, real songs playing as the music, like legit people singing. And it's crazy that, that that's actually a thing. Um, this is such a downgraded port, it's kind of, like, insulting. And it's, I mean, it's fun and all that, but, like, after playing the arcade game, I was like, wow, we got kind of short-changed uh, on this one. I'm not sure why I own this one either. Uh, I got this, I think, for, like, $2 at Half Price Books. It's Double Dribble, the Playoff Edition. I loved Double Dribble on the NES, so that's why I bought this, because I was like, oh, look, an upgraded version of Double Dribble on the Genesis? Why not? And it's okay. It's not the greatest thing ever. Uh, I Like I said, I got this for, like, $2 at Half Price Books, so I wasn't really going to complain. Uh, I was trying to get this RPG for the longest time, and it was always way too expensive. And then one of my friends on Facebook was, like, selling parts of his collection, and this was one of the games that was shown, and it was being sold at a very good price, so I jumped on it. Dungeons & Dragons, Warriors of the Eternal Sun. This one is also kind of like playing Ultima, or maybe a little bit of Hydlide. <laughs> uh, but it also has your typical dungeon crawling, you know, first-person view, you know, going through the dungeons thing. Um, it, I haven't put a whole lot of time into it. And but it is pretty fun. I like this one a lot. Dungeons and Dragons. Oh shit! This is like a tall stack of shit. Oh my god! Don't drop on my head, please. Thank you. God damn. Okay. I own this for nostalgic purposes only because there's a version of this on the Sega CD that is way better, and that's Eternal Champions. Uh, it's like the first legit one-on-one uh, -on -one fighting game that came out for the Genesis that wasn't Street Fighter II, the Championship Edition, or whatever it was. This one was developed by Sega. And it's not good. 
Uh, you could play... I think this is the first game that used the six-button controller. You could also use that shitty activator thing, that, like, octagon that you would put on the floor, and, and like, laser beams that would shoot up and red lasers, and if you would break the beams with your hands, it would correspond to a movement in the game. Didn't work at all. What's up, Peter Bateman? How's it going? Lurking at work. Can't ask for anything more. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, Eternal Champions has huge sprites, large characters. They move slow as shit. Uh, the gameplay is garbage. The controls are borderline unresponsive. Can never get a uh, move to work. It, it's it's a bad game. It is really, really bad. There's fatalities and stuff, but good luck trying to get those to pull off because it has to do with where you land when you die. Um, yeah, it's horrible. It's not good. But I bought it when it first came out, and I played the crap out of it because, you know, you bought a new game, you played the crap out of it. You know, you weren't going to get one for another month or so, maybe. Maybe another two months. You never know. You know back then, I only bought games every once in a while. Um, but... Yeah, the Sega CD version blows this one out of the water. This one I bought a long time ago, and I still don't think I've played it. Uh, it's X-Mutants. So I kind of like, you look at the cover, and it looks very X-Men. Even the title, X-Mutants, makes you think X-Men, but it's not that. It's, uh, yeah, Lord Mutant Sluggo. I think this is like an original title from Sega, and it's like a side-scrolling platformer action game. And, uh... I keep getting this confused with that Experts, I think it's called. Experts? That's like a spinoff of uh, Eternal Champions. But, yeah, I still haven't played this one, so I cannot tell you if it is good or not. That's, I bought that, like, years ago, and I still haven't played it. Um, here's another one of those Electronic Arts games that has, like, the huge manual, but the thing is, I don't have the manual for this one at all. I got this at Gen Con. The second time I went to Gen Con, when I was collecting for video games, uh, this was in. I found this in their auction store. Uh, at the Gen Con, and it's the Fairy Tale Adventure. It's another one of those RPGs. Looks a lot like uh, Ultima. I don't think I've played this one either, uh, because I definitely want to get the manual first. I need to find a co uh, copy of that on uh, eBay. Okay, so this is a repro, and I got this from the Cartridge Arcade. That's the name of the Etsy shop, Cartridge Arcade. Damn. Um, I saw this listed on their Etsy shop, and I laughed my ass off, and I said I absolutely have to have it. Because it's based on, they, they turned, they, it's basically a hack of an existing game, and they turned it into a licensed game from a modern movie, or based on a modern movie. And I was like, what? And it's a Russian one at that. There's no English in this game, everything's in Russian. Uh, so I absolutely had to have it based on that fact alone. And I keep on saying I'm going to review it, I will review it, I can't get this to work on my Retro Freak, so I have to play it on my CDX, and now that I have the Retro Tink, I can get capture footage for it. It is Fast Five. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's a hack of combat cars, uh, on the Genesis, and they turn it into a Fast and the Furious 5 game, and you can play as all the characters from the movies, or at least some of the ones, I don't know who a couple of these people are, but you can play as Dom, you can play as Letty, you can play as Brian, you can play as, uh, Roman, um, I don't know who a couple of these people are, <laughs> but there's, like, actual, like, digitized pictures of some of the actors down here, uh, and the gameplay is, like, a top-down car racing game kind of like micro machines uh but not nearly as good i will be definitely doing a review of this in the future just because just for shits and giggles because you know me and movie licensed games are friends you know we hang out all the time outside of work get a couple drinks um fatal labyrinth haven't played this one either and i bought this so long ago it's just like i bought like all these rpg type games like at once and i was like i don't have any time to play some of these uh so i need to put some time aside to play it but it's an rpg and it looks pretty cool I remember my friend Brian had it, and I watched him play it a little bit back in the day, and I thought, like, oh, it's pretty interesting, but I never owned it myself back then. Fatal Rewind, this is another one of those Cygnosis joints, Little Owl. Um, this one is based off of an Amiga game, I think it was called The Killer, the Killer Game Show. Uh, it's kind of like making fun of The Running Man, uh, but here it got renamed Fatal Rewind, and for some reason, the cartridge... There is nowhere to fit the cartridge in here. It is just the cartridge is just loose. <laughs> There's something to hold the manual in place, but the cartridge just slides all over the place. It's crazy, uh, but yeah, it's okay. It's like a platformer. I don't know how to categorize it. It's like, uh, it's weird. You play as this little tiny little ship. There's other things coming at you. You shoot them, but you have to hop around and all that. It's, it's okay. Um. Final Zone, one of those, uh, what is it, Renovation joints that came out for the uh, Sega Genesis. Uh, Renovation was one of my favorite publishers 
back in the day. They used to release the weirdest stuff, except for Ernest Evans. I could never get into that. Or was it El Viento? I think it was... No, I think it was Ernest Evans because of the ragdoll physics. It was crazy. Uh, Final Zone is an isometric mech game. And uh, there's a sequel to this, and I have it for the uh, TurboGrafx-16. This one is okay. The TurboGrafx-16 one is eh, all right. Um, but yeah, or, or, like I said, isometric mech game. You can blow everything up. Buildings, whatever you want. This is a classic. I didn't buy this right away. I rented this one a lot from my local video store. The video store I ended up working at uh, back in the uh, mid-2000s. Or mid-90s. Sorry, mid-2000s. That is sad. Uh, mid-90s. And that is Flashback Quest for Identity. 12 megabyte game. Remember when that meant something? Should I do it like uh, GameSec? 12 meg power! Whatever. Uh, this is like one of those cinematic platformers, kind of like Prince of Persia. Sci-fi themed, obviously. It is fantastic. I have, I don't know how many versions of this game over, I don't know how many different consoles. I have this. I have it for the 3DO. I have it for the Switch. <laughs> there, It's available for the Super Nintendo. Um... I know there was like a port or like a remastered version that came out for like the PS3 and the 360 that got really crappy reviews. Um, but it's a fantastic game. I love the story of it. Basically, this guy wakes up like in this forest with no memory. Uh, and he's been shot down by who knows who. And he crash landed in the forest, wakes up, no memory. And it's about him trying to get it back. And it's nuts. About an alien invasion. Pretty rad. Love it. Uh, we got Forgotten Worlds. This is a shmup, uh, like an auto-scrolling shmup, but your characters are floating kind of like in uh, Battle Mania 2. They float, and you can shoot at any direction around you. It's really, really fun. I think this is based on an arcade game. Cannot be certain. But this is one of those early uh, Genesis games that I was talking about, so I had to have that. Got this at this year's Midwest Gaming Classic. We got Gyrus. Uh, this is a ver or horizontally scrolling shmup. It is hard as shit. But it is fantastic. I love everything about it. The graphics are great. The music is great. The plays control. Or the play control is really, really good. Uh, you can see it's just nuts. This game is nuts. There's so much stuff going on. I mean, like, come on, you end up fighting a friggin' mech, like a giant robot with a sword, as a sh as a little ship shooting at it. Talked about this in my uh, Diamonds in the Rough for the Genesis video that came out a couple of weeks ago. And that's Gain Ground. This game is fantastic. It's based off of an arcade game that was I. Th think made by sega if i remember correctly and then for some reason renovation got the rights to release the sega game on the sega console that's weird uh but i don't know if i did a great job describing what the gameplay is like so it's like a single screen type of game each time each level is its own screen you have a character you can play as you have three to pick from you have like this aborigine guy you have this like six shooter cowboy looking guy and you have this this girl with like a shotgun or whatever it was and you can pick between the three of them. There's another character you can add to your party on that level. You have to touch them, and then they kind of like become attached to you, and you have to escort them to the exit. And if you can take them to the exit, they join your party. There's enemies on each screen trying to take you out from two different levels, from ground level, and they have like a high level. So each person has a ground level attack and an aerial attack. And the thing is, if you die, if you get hit, you become one of those little statues and then you pick as a, you pick yeah, you can pick another character that's in your party and you can re-pick up that character that you were playing as but you can only bring one of these characters that is available on that screen to the exit you cannot bring two so if you die on that level you have to make a choice do you want that person that you were playing as to rejoin the party or do you want that new person because you don't know what their abilities are going to be so it's like a crapshoot do you get the person you know has something that you, that's useful or this person that could possibly be a piece of crap um, and it's a great game. It's really, really fun. And it's, like, there's strategy involved. It's cool. Uh, here's another one of these awesome Cygnosis games. But this one was released by Electronic Arts also. Got the little Cygnosis owl. Galahad. It's a platformer that is really clunky. Like, uh, the reason why... I remember I talked about it in that Cygnosis Quest. The one Cygnosis Quest video I made. Uh, the reason why I didn't buy a whole lot of Cygnosis games back in the day was they were very iffy quality-wise because a lot of them were ports of their games for, like, the in the uh, Commodore 64 or the Amiga. And those don't really translate very well. Like, if you have a keyboard or a joystick or whatever, fine. But, like, for the, the control pad, no. I think this is one of them. Like, your character is very floaty and, like, the, the jumping is imprecise and it's... It's fun, but it's kind of not fun at the same time. The graphics are cool. The music is fun. But for the most part, it's like, it's frustrating to play. So I kind of like, 
went, all right, this is one of the lesser ones. This is one of the reasons why I wasn't a big fan of Cygnosis back in the day, but I, I am now, so I had to have it. And there was gunk on this. I think it was on the table. Galaxy Force 2, it's another one of those early Sega Genesis games. You can tell by the way the packaging is. Uh, this is like their version of, like Sega's version of Star Fox. I remember I played the arcade game of this at, oh God, it was like this one arcade that was actually like, it was always, I remember it always being dark in there. And like too dark. Like it was kind of creepy dark. Uh, it was the only place that had a Zybots coin op, and I love Zybots, so that's why I would go there. They had this, but it was like the sit-down version, and like when you would play it, if you would pull back on the joysticks to move your character up, it would shift you up and go back down. It would shift you down. So it was like a almost like a motion ride at the same time. It was pretty cool. But this is like Star Fox, like a behind-the-ship shmup, and it's really fun. doesn't play nearly as well on the home consoles as it did in the arcade. Obviously, I mean, it's a home port. Back then, nothing was arcade perfect. We had to wait for the Dreamcast for that, people. One of my favorite games for the Genesis is Gauntlet 4. Uh, the only place we got Part 3 was on the Lynx. Uh, and that is a great port. You have to hold the console like horse, or vertically to play it. And you <laughs> The weird thing about the Lynx is, like, yeah, to, to play Gauntlet 3, you have to hold the Lynx vertically. And you got the control pad down here and the buttons, like the A and B buttons up here. So you got to like play it like this. It is the weirdest thing, but it's it, it works. Uh, but Gauntlet 4 is like the final Gauntlet game that gets stuck in the original series before they rebooted it. Uh, what was the, the one? Gauntlet Legends. Uh, but this game has fantastic music. The same gameplay. Everything is the same. There's boss battles in this, though. Like You can fight a giant dragon. You can see it right here. Uh, but the music in this game is fantastic. It does not sound like Genesis music. It actually sounds more like a Super Nintendo game. It's fantastic. I love it. The best Ghostbusters game we got in North America, not counting the one that came out in Japan, you know, with new Ghostbusters 2. But this one uh, was one of the games I was looking for at the third Midwest Gaming Classic I went to, so that was in 2017. Uh, this was one of the games I was, like, I had on my list, and I found it right at the very end. And this is the last thing I bought there that year. And I got it for a decent price. The guy dropped, like, I think 10 bucks off of it because I asked him if he'd be willing to, like, you know, was it sell for 55 instead of 65 or whatever it was? Uh, but it's a platformer, and everyone's, like, super deformed, so, like, the characters resemble the, you know, the actors from the movie, but, like, they have a tiny body and a huge head, uh, but it's a really great game. It's not really based on any movie, it's just a Ghostbusters game, you know, you shoot ghosts, and you play as the Ghostbusters, that's all you need to know. Ghouls and Ghosts, I think I got this from Musty Hobbit, I think. Musty Hobbit was, like, pairing some games out of his, out of his, uh, collection, and yeah, this is beat up. A little bit. The cartridge looks like like musty, like ground his feet in it <laughs> or into it. But it's a port of the arcade game, and I think the I think this is the same game as the Genesis, the uh, Super Nintendo uh, Ghouls and Ghosts, Super Ghouls and Ghosts. Uh, actually, I think this one's a little bit better. It plays better. Talking about Golden Axe, got Golden Axe one and two arcade ports, beat 'em ups. I don't know if Part Two was an arcade game, but Part One, Part One definitely was. I have this crappy Sega Classic game. I got it in a lot. No! Uh, my brother's friend, Chris, uh, was moving from California back to uh, Illinois. And my brother was over there helping him pack. And my brother saw that he had like this... It was a box. had a bunch of Genesis games in it and a Sega Genesis. And he goes, hey, my brother is collecting video games. Would you be interested in selling these to him? And he was like, yeah, I want to get rid of all this kind of stuff. So there was like... 20 maybe 15 20 games in the box and a sega genesis like the model one and my brother texted me the picture and he was like hey chris is selling these things how much would you like them and if you want them how much would you be willing to say or pay and i was i was like i'm gonna lowball them at the start and see what they say i'll, I'll give you 20 bucks and they were like sold <laughs> so i got a handful of really good games this was one of them it turned out to be the sega classic version i can always trade it in if i want to uh, but I haven't yet, and I've had this for years at this point. Uh, but that's a great cla uh, great arcade port. Uh, there's part two, and we never got part three over here, but I have a repro of it. Uh, part three only came out in Japan, I want to say. Maybe Europe. Uh, but it's a great... Uh, I got this from Toy Story's Games. You can tell I got this from Toy Story's Games because he's got one of his typical tr you know, colored translucent carts. Um... But it's a fantastic game. Uh, the character it plays just like the other ones. I mean, but there's like new characters you can play as. One of them is a cat man, and you can see him back here. No, you can't. That's not him. Oh yeah, you can. He's riding the dragon. 
Uh, it's really, really good. I don't know what Sega was thinking when they did not release that over here. That makes no sense. Green Dog, The Beach, Surfer Dude. I got this at Half Price Books for, I want to say, 5 bucks. It's based on a real person, like a real surfer and like his persona uh, as like a hippie surfer guy. Uh, but the graphics are weird. The character doesn't even look like he has a face. He just basically has hair. He has like this quaff of hair that's like this. And you don't really see his face. It's a platformer. It's okay. I don't remember you doing much surfing in it. We're going to talk about Treasure, man. Here's Treasure's first big outing. We got Gunstar Heroes. I absolutely love this game. I used to have a Sega Nomad. And I would bring it to work with me. I used to work at a limousine place like in the mid to late 90s. And I was working like the late shift. So I'd be there until like midnight. And we usually wouldn't get a lot of... I was I was working in the billing department. I used to work... At, I, like For two weeks I worked as a reservationist. But they realized I typed too fast for a reservationist. So they put me in the billing department because I was really I was a really fast typist. And like when I would finish my work, I'd have all this free time. And I'd bring my Nomad and I'd sit there and I'd play this. And I play it. And Gunstar Heroes was one of these games that I was playing all the time. And it's fantastic. It's a Contra-style shmup, but it's very cartoony. You have, like, four different weapons to choose from, and you can mix them in different ways. Like, there's lasers, and there's, like, a, a, like a machine gun, uh, and there's, like, a bounce uh, gun, and you can combine two different weapons together to make, like, a new weapon. And it was really, really cool. It's, like, nonstop boss battles. It's crazy. I love it. The graphics are nuts. Ghostbusters! <laughs> Sorry, that's the Master System version. Or that's the NES version. That game is shit. I used to have Ghostbusters, that Ghostbusters game for the Atari 2600. It was poop there too. Uh, but Gunstar Heroes is one of my all-time favorites. And it's Treasure's first big game. Took forever for me to get this. I've been trying to get this for the longest time. I don't understand why it's in this gigantic, thick-ass uh, slip or uh, clamshell. But Haunting, starring Poltergeist. I picked this up while I was out game hunting with Captain Algebra. Uh, and for some reason, like, look how thick, let me see, okay, you got Gunstar Heroes, and then you got Haunting, starring Poltergeist, look at that, what, why, why did it need to be that thick, I don't know, Electronic Arts is freaking crazy, and the instruction manual is not one of those thick ones, it's a normal instruction manual, I don't understand why it needs that much space, this takes up so much space on my shelf, eh. Electronic Arts screwing people over back in the day, too. And I just dropped my cartridge on the floor. Awesome. Uh, but Haunting vs. Starring Poltergeist is like Beetlejuice. Uh, you play as this this crazy ghost guy who's like a... He's a troublemaker. And you're trying to scare people out of the different houses that the game takes place in. So you possess different things, and then you scare the characters, and you have to get them to get... They, they become so frightened that they end up like saying, screw this house, we're moving out. And you just go to another house after that and do it again. And it's really, really fun and funny. Some of the things that your character ends up doing, like, cracks me up to no end. Um, I don't know why this is still in my, my collection. I did a video a long time ago, and I think John Riggs was in it. Maybe? They might have been the one that was John Riggs and uh, Wood from uh, Beat'em Ups. Uh, and that's Heavy Nova. I did a video about... Like, games you regret buying or whatever it was. This was one. Heavy Nova's a beat-em-up. Uh, and it's... You play as a robot, and you beat up other robots. Okay, so... I remember seeing the ads for this back in the day in all the video game magazines. And I thought it looked fantastic. Never got a chance to buy it. I didn't even rent it. Nobody ever had this to rent. Um, Micronet. Company that not a lot of people would know. Uh, but it has 8, meg or eight megabit memory. Oh my god. Well, I found out when I got back into collecting in 2011, because this was one of the first games I picked, I picked up. Went on eBay, found this for, I think, 10 bucks, and I was like, that's that game I always wanted back in the day that I was never able to even play. I need that in my life. And I bought it, showed up, played it, and instantly regretted it. This game is shit. It is garbage. And I do, like I said, I do not know why I still have it in my collection. Except maybe to be a talking point in videos, which is probably why it's still there. Uh, this this game, if I ever do five years down the line another series of these types of collection videos, this might not be shown. <laughs> Got this from uh, Nintendo Herzog's Y. This is another one of those original Sega Genesis games. This is one of the first games released for the console, and I gotta give him credit. Like, you know those game like the games used to come with a uh, like a poster, like a fold out poster that would have like all the games that are available for the Sega Genesis. They really had a wide variety of 
game styles available from the start. Because this is a, a uh, real-time strategy game. <laughs> um, yeah, it looks like a shooter. It looks like a shmup on the surface, but it is not. It's a real-time strategy game. And it's actually pretty fun. It's pretty simplified from what you would expect nowadays from a uh, real-time strategy game, but it's pretty cool. Another game I talked about in the uh, Diamonds in the Rough for the Sega Genesis, we got The Immortal. This is another game I was talking about, like Funko Land. Came into Funko Land one day, this was sitting on the shelf, the Genesis version, and Sonny would be like, hey, look, I got this new game, you might want to try it out. And I was like, Psst. I have that for this, the uh, Nintendo. Why would I want to buy a game again that I already own? Make no sense. Uh, but like I talked about in the uh, Diamonds in the Rough video, the Immortal that we got on the NES was heavily censored. The one that came out for, I think it was, I might have been an Amiga game. I can't remember what console, what computer it came out for. Uh, but the con the version that was, the computer version was really, really violent. And Nintendo wasn't big on the violence, even though they let the whole Hitler's head blowing up in Bionic Commando thing slide. And the sex scene from Gogol 13, they let that go too. Uh, but when we got the Genesis game is when we got the uncut version. And like when you fight a troll or a goblin, you cut their heads off. Um, you cut them in half, you slice them vertically down the middle, it's disgusting a lot. You cut one skull cap off and, like, his brain is pulsating in his head, it's nuts. Uh, especially, like, the one where you cut the goblin in half and, like, his legs fall over and his intestines just spill out all over the floor. <laughs> but it's a, uh, platform puzzle game. It's really, really fun. The music is really catchy. I love it. The, it's just like the NES game, just with better graphics, better sound. Well, it's, Honestly, I was lax honestly last night I was actually listening to the soundtrack of the NES version. I compared it to this version and I still like the NES version more. It had more bass. Uh, but it's the music is clearer and more like uh, complex in this version. But it's a great game. Uh, it's really really hard. It's all about trial and error, but you want to play a great adventure game, this is one you want. It is great. I highly recommend it. Talked about this in the Diamonds in the Rough also in Sector X horizontally scrolling shmup where you play as like the wasp and you're taking out robo insects and it's really fun it's different that's why i talked about it in the video don't need to get into it a whole lot here the incredible hulk this is a side scrolling beat em up and it's okay i think there's a version of this also for the super nintendo i might trade this in if you don't want it anymore i'll take it but i'm not paying it if it's so bad <laughs> oh heavy nova heavy nova's poop dude you don't want it trust me you're gonna you're gonna like I know his address now. I'm going to go to his house and shoot him in the face. <laughs> uh, Incredible Hulk. It's okay. Um, Marvel wasn't really a big deal back when this came out. <laughs> Not like it is nowadays. Uh, so, yeah, they could do whatever the hell they wanted to it. And I, I remember it being okay just as a beat-em-up, but anything else, not so much. The graphics and the music are all right. Uh, but I'm, I've been thinking about trading this in for the Super Nintendo one. I don't know why I still own this one. I picked this up off of a person on Facebook. Got a got like a bunch of games from him at once. <clears throat> and I was like, oh, that's another one of those games I always wanted back in the day. I remember seeing this at People Play Games a couple years before they closed. And I, I passed on it for something else. Uh, so I was like, oh, they're selling this on Facebook? I was like, I, I should get that. And I think the guy sold it to me for six bucks. Uh, that's Instruments of Chaos starring young Indiana Jones. And I was like, yes, Indiana Jones. Yes, let's do this. Uh, and this game is... Absolute shit. Um, it controls like ass. And it is very, like, frustratingly difficult and vague and hard. And it's like, it's like they just throw you into this thing and they're like, figure it out on your own. Like, the first level. Like, I think you can pick your levels that you go to. I think it's like Mega Man, I think. And you can, because I only played this the one time and I was like, I'm never playing this again. Um, I think you can pick which level you want to go to. There's like four, I think, at the start. And the first one that I picked, I was like, the first thing, like, you die the moment you start walking. It, it's garbage. That was a Sega effing us in the A. Here's a game nobody ever talks about that's a licensed game that I think is actually fantastic. And that is James Bond 007 The Duel. This one is uh, not based on any specific James Bond movie, uh, but it did come out uh, when Timothy Dalton was playing the character, which is one of my favorite versions of Bond because he's closer to the book, uh, the book version of the character. But it's a platformer, shooter, and it's really colorful, really fun. The music is super awesome in this game. Uh, not much spy sh uh, sh uh, shenanigans going on in here. It's, it's like a run and gun. But it's really, really cool. I like it a lot. Nobody ever talks about it. I think it's fantastic. Uh, we got Jewel Master, which is another like side-scrolling 
run and gunny type game. I don't know if it's a run and gun, but like a, a side scrolling platformer shmup. Uh, and the cool thing is, is you have all these different rings. And you can combine them on your fingers and in the different combinations. They do different things. So you can, there's like, I don't know how many combinations. Does it even say how many combinations of uh, weapons you can have in here? Because you can even see here, like, the whole screen where you can, like, uh, equip all the different rings on the different part, their different fingers. And it, it creates, like, crazy weaponry. You can have, like, a fire weapon and then it add a wave weapon to it. And all of a sudden you got a fireball wave. And it's it's nuts. And that's the draw to this game is the, the weapon combinations. It reminds me a lot of Alicia Dragoon. Except Alicia Dragoon is the way better game. Which is a game I need to be looking for also. I need to get that at this uh, upcoming Midwest Gaming Classic if I can find it. Uh, we got two games in the same series here. So we got Jurassic Park and Jurassic Park Rampage Edition. Rampage Edition is basically the fixed version of this. <laughs> Um, this one, I mean, it's a cool game. I like it. Uh, I like this more than the Super Nintendo Jurassic Park game. But it is clunky as hell, and the platforming is not very good. They fixed pretty much everything in the Rampage Edition, but the graphics are a little bit different. They're more cartoony. This one, I think, was uh, the digitized actor thing, or at least a pseudo version of a digitized actor. And that's why I think the platforming is so imprecise. But here, it's like an animated character, and it works a lot better. And I think this is the one you can play as a raptor also. Yeah, be a dinosaur. You can play as a raptor in this and in this one also. They're fun games. They could have been better. They're not terrible. Last Battle, which is yet another game, like Black Belt for the Sega Master System, that was a Hakuto no Ken or a Fist of the North Star game that had to be rebranded when it came over here because of the violent content. <clears throat> because Kenshiro from the Fist of the North Star, you know, anime, manga, whatever, whatever it is, um, he punches people and their heads explode. We can't have that kind of violence over here. We're, we're a bunch of wusses over in the U.S. So it had to be changed, and they changed the name in its place because no one would know what the hell Fist of the North Star or Hakuta no Ken was over here anyway at that point in time because the anime hadn't even come out here yet. But I had been reading the manga for the longest time. Uh, so I would have known, but that's I was in the minority. Uh, but it's a beat-em-up, and instead of people's heads exploding, they just explode into blocks. Okay, so here's a personal favorite of mine. Um, the thing about it is the the Super Nintendo. It's more of the Super Nintendo one than the Genesis one. I bought the Genesis one back in the day because, like I said, I used to work at that limousine place and I'd work that late shift, and you know I'd have all this free time and I'd be like, you know, this would be a great game to play on my Nomad while I was at work. So I bought the Genesis port of it so I could play it because I like playing it so much because I thought it was such a fantastic game. It is a licensed game. It's not a well loved licensed game. I think it's fantastic. I have a lot of fun with it. And that's Lawnmower Man. I love the Super Nintendo one. It did so many cool things. There's like these first person mode 7 areas that are like virtual reality like in the movie. It's awesome. Uh, on top of side-scrolling platformer, you know, run and gun things like Contra. Um, and they try to do all those things in the Genesis version, but they don't really pull it off because it can't do mode 7. It doesn't even do anything close. Uh, they they managed to make it look decent, which is cool thing about this one is, I've never beaten the Super Nintendo one because it is hard as balls. I have beaten this one, though, because this one has a uh, easier difficulty setting. So, it's a fantastic game. It's a great license game. You need to pick it up if you haven't. If you're on the fence, I recommend it wholeheartedly. I say do it. Here's another awesome treasure game. It's called Light Crusader. It's a isometric RPG action... action RPG, maybe? Haven't put a lot of time into it. I played it when it showed up to see if the cartridge worked, and it was pretty cool. Was that game about landscaping? No, it was not. Peter. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this looks it looks great. I really, really, really like this one. I need to... I actually... The next time I have some free time, I think I'm going to play this one because it just looks like so much fun. I think Kungi Garaya was streaming this not too long ago. We got Lightning Force... Quest for the Dark Star. Got this from my pal Felix the Brett uh, from Batterad. He, look up Batterad on eBay. He's got a store. He sells a lot of stuff. Really good prices. Uh, actually, really, really good prices. And he gives me deals whenever he has like a lot of things. Now he actually has a store at a flea market. And he keeps on saying, like, you know, if you want any of these games, let me know and I'll sell them for you at a good price. And I'm like, well, how about you send me a list so I know what the hell you have, dude. <laughs> but Lightning Force, I think, is part of the Thunder Force series. But this one is actually part four. Um, for some reason they renamed it. I don't know why. 
So we got Lightning for Thunder. Well, honestly, where's the first Thunder Force? I know we have Thunder Force 2. I do own it. I don't have Thunder Force 3. I want it. I had it back in the day. Uh, and there's a Thunder Force 5 for the PlayStation 1. But this is Thunder Force 4, but they renamed it. I think it's because Sega released this one instead of Renovation. But it's a, uh, a side-scrolling or horizontal-scrolling shmup and a really good one at that. Uh, music is catchy. It's fast-paced as all hell. Hard as balls. But it's great. Okay, <laughs> uh, here's a repro, or yeah, I guess it's a repro. Um, this game was never released. It's by Ocean Software, which is a one of those companies that I just do not like all that much because a lot of their games, which was mostly licensed stuff, was like this is the company that made licensed games bad. Not LJN, Ocean, and Mindscape. Leave Phil Torpen alone. What's going on, dude? How is it going? Yeah. Like, yeah, I remember that from uh, when I played Light Crusader, Phil. It's it's a fun game. I just never put a whole lot of time into it. That laugh sounded like the Seinfeld bass. <laughs> um, <laughs> glad to see you're here, Phil. Really, uh, really am. Been a long time. Haven't talked to you in a while. We need to play Final Fr or Friday the 13th again. Um, this game was never released. I think it was supposed to come out for the Super Nintendo and the Genesis, and it got canceled before it was finished. It's based on a DC comic book character, and... Um, and they turned it into a one-on-one -on -one fighting game. And I saw this on the Cartridge Arcade's Etsy shop, and I was like, oh my god, I remember seeing ads for that back in the day. I need to have it. So I got it. And then I played it. And I was like, I should have left it on, you know, out of my cart on their <laughs> in their Etsy shop because it is poop. But it's a nice talking point, and I will be doing a review of it, and it's called Lobo. Uh, Lobo is like a... I guess he's considered like an anti-hero in the DC universe. He's like a bounty hunter, an alien bounty hunter. He's always chomping on a cigar. I know they tried to make a movie out of this at one point. It just didn't happen. I know they're trying to do it again. They want Jason Momoa to play him, which is a great choice, I will say. Uh, but yeah, it's a it's a one-on-one -on -one fighting game, and it is basically the equivalent of Shaq Fu. So, not great. I will be doing a review of this on the channel at some point. I bought that like years ago. I bought that probably in like 2015. Um, I talked about this in my Diamonds in the Rough that just came out a couple weeks ago. Maze and Saga Mutant Fighter. This game is amazing. It is part beat-em-up, and it is part one-on-one -on -one fighting game. It's based on a manga called Mazinger Z. Why they shortened the name from Mazinger Z to Mazin, I don't know. Uh, probably because that license was not known over here. So, you know, they weren't trying to pawn this off as a licensed game because of the stigma. So they made it something else. But this is a fantastic game. It is so much fun. The music is so catchy and really bass heavy and like uh, drum heavy. And it's it's fun to play. It's all you can ask for in a video game. Boss battles that are like the size of the screen. It's awesome. I love it. Uh, here is a game that is developed by Treasure and it is a, a licensed game. It's a license that I never thought I'd ever own. <laughs> it's a license that I'm surprised I actually got. Well, there were those NES games. So it kind of makes sense then, I guess. Uh, but we're talking McDonald's Treasureland Adventure. I own a game that's about McDonald's. Well, actually, I own two of them. The other one's coming up. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's a game where you play as Ronald McDonald. How good can it be? It's really good. It's a platformer. Like I said, it's developed by Treasure. It is, on the surface, a kid's game, but a kid would not have the patience to put up with some of the platforming in this game. But it is really, really fun. Great graphics, great music. It plays so well. And uh, I remember, like, I saw a review of this on e on a YouTube somewhere. And I can't remember exactly where. It might have been Classic Game Room. And I was like, wow. I remember seeing that at Funko Land when it was first, a, you know, a thing. When it first came out. And going, like, there is no way in hell I'm buying a game that has McDonald's branded on the front. There's no way. And then I saw the review and I was like, yeah, I kind of want it now. So I bought it and it's awesome. Would you say the music is drum and bass? Yeah. Kind of close. It's it's a it's like the first like thirty seconds of every song is boom boom sh, boom 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 sh, boom boom. It's just drums. <laughs> it's awesome. Love this game. I love this franchise. I want the second game for the Super Nintendo, but it is like you know I'd have to sell my kidneys to get it. Mega Turrican. Um, Turrican's a, con uh, a franchise that's been around since like the Commodore sixty four. Uh, all the games are ports of those PC games, the Commodore 64, the Amiga games, over to the Super Nintendo and the Genesis. There's one that I have for this, the Genesis that is a Turrican game, but it's not a Turrican game. They they branded it with another with a movie license that makes no sense. Uh, you'll see it next week. 
I'm actually going to do a video about it, talking about it, because it's so that's such a weird situation. But Mega Turkin, I think, is more of a, uh, a port of uh, Turkin 3. Um, but it has the music from the first level of the Super Nintendo game in it, the first one. And that that's one of my favorite pieces of music of all time. Uh, so it's a side-scrolling run-and-gun, and it's like playing Contra, but a psychotic version of Contra. Uh, and the graphics are absolutely nuts. You have, like, a whip that you can use to swing with. Uh, you can attach to certain parts of, like, uh, platforms, and you can actually use it to swing around. You can actually do, like, loops with it. It's really, really cool. It's really expensive. I got this really cheap on eBay, and I couldn't figure out why. And it's because, oh, Chris, you need to read the fide print. This is why I got it real cheap. It didn't come with the goddamn manual. <laughs> so if anyone has a Mega Turrican manual they're willing to part with, let me know. I would like to make that complete. But that's why I got it as cheap as I did. Uh, Mega Dan streamed this, Mercs, not too long ago. Maybe six months ago or something. And this was another game that I never played at Funko Land uh, when I was playing all those games that they had on, the, on their shelves and all that. But I always wanted to, and I just never had it, never rented it, never played it until I saw Mega Dan streaming it, and I was like, that looks like a lot of fun. It's like playing um, Commando, like the original Commando arcade game or whatever, but your character is really, really tiny, and it is like a top-down action game. It's kind of like playing, like, it's Commando, but what's that Konami game that I keep on, it's like on the tip of my tongue. I want to say Russian Attack, but it's not Russian Attack. Shit. I'm like drawing a complete blank now. Super fun game, though. When I finally got a copy of it, I got it pretty cheap. I was looking for this at the Midwest Gaming Classic this year, and I could not find it. Uh, no, actually, I did find it. It had no manual, so I skipped on it. Uh, but I got it right when I got home. I went on eBay and started scouring, and I found somebody slipping on eBay and got this for, I think, 30 bucks, which is awesome. This is another game that was on my list at the third Midwest Gaming Classic that I went to, uh, the one in 2017. Uh, this is one of the games I absolutely had to get while I was there, and I got it pretty cheap. Michael Jackson's Moonwalker. Um, it's a fun game. It's a side-scrolling platformer, and one and you, you throw your hat as a as a attack. <laughs> and uh, when you get overwhelmed, you make everyone dance to death. Um, this is the uh, altered version. The version that came out originally, it got recalled because for some reason, I guess some of the music in Thriller, which was what was used during the uh, graveyard level. There was a licensing issue with that song specifically, so the game had to be recalled, and that song had to be taken out. And in its place, they put on, they put in there another part of me, which plays over the the graveyard level, which makes no sense. It's so out of place. Um, there are repros you can buy. I know the ones that have Thriller and are super expensive. I'm never gonna get that, but there are repros you can buy of it that have the Thriller music back into it. But I was always disappointed that this was not a port of the arcade game. The arcade game of Moonwalker was fantastic. It was like an isometric uh, beat-em-up where you could turn to the robot and all that and you would shoot lasers and blow everybody up. It was really, really fun. And it had like either three or four player co-op at the same time, but everyone would be a different color. Like their the suit that Michael Jackson wears, like the white suit would be a different color for each character. One would be red, one would be blue. It was really, really fun. I, we never got a port of that ever. And it's really sad. But I'm not sad that this, you know, that what we got was this. Because this is actually a pretty fun game. It's very repetitive, though. That's my issue. And the last game I'm talking about today, because this is this is the end of this video, people. This is the last game I'm talking about until next week. Is the other McDonald's game. And that's Mick and Mac Global Gladiators. Um, this one itself isn't directly tied into um, McDonald's. The NES version is. Because this is, I think, a sequel to Mick Kids that came out for the NES, and that's where McDonald's symbols everywhere. It's all about McDonald's. You're collecting the, the M symbols and all that kind of crap. This one's a sequel to it. Doesn't have anything really to do with McDonald's, but you're trying to clean up pollution. So it's polit It's socially conscious, people. It's trying to say something. Uh, it's a platformer that's okay. The music is the best thing in this game. It's by Tommy Tallarico, and it's really catchy. and does not sound like uh, music that would come out of a cartridge for the Genesis. Uh, but it's okay. It's very cartoony uh but it's fun it's uh, i like it it's not bad and that's it for the sega genesis at least for part one of the sega genesis i talked about all of my sega master system games in the first half of my sega genesis games next week i will finish off the sega genesis games and then go into all my sega cd games yeah the music in global gladiators is fun is really really catchy I, like i actually find myself listening to it like while i'm editing 
I like I have a whole crap load of uh, video game music on my computer, and I like listen to stuff while I'm editing in the background. And that's one that I usually do. Um, usually the stuff that Tommy Tallarico, uh, the stuff that he composed for video games, is actually pretty decent. If you've never listened to the soundtrack that he did for Advent Rising, which was a, an Xbox game, like after hearing all the like techno-y, like rock themed stuff that he would do for like he did for the Terminator, um, he did Mick and Mac, or he did the Global Gladiators. Um, oh, what other games did he do? Well, he did like everything that he would do. Oh, uh, cool spot. It always sounded very techno-y or, or rock influence. And then you listen to Advent Cell Children or Advent Rising, and it's like orchestral, like symphonies and you know opera sounding, and it's really really good. Uh, when I saw Video Games Live, the the concert that Tommy Tallarico was putting together back in like the late two thousands, uh, when the uh, Chicago Comic Con was happening one year across the street at the Rosemont Theater. They had the video games live thing happening, and I went, and Tommy Tallarico hosted it, and they actually played live that opening uh, musical number from uh, Advent Rising, and it was fantastic hearing that live with a real orchestra. It was awesome. So if you, if you want to, if I'm going to recommend a video game soundtrack today, everybody, Advent Rising, look for that. It's fantastic. Um, so yes, next week will be uh, the rest of my Sega Genesis games and my Sega CD games. Um, a lot of heavy hitters in there. Yeah, a lot more weird-ass repros. There's one that I can't wait to talk about. I still need to do a review of it on my channel. I'm lazy. <laughs> um, and I have the, like, when I want to talk about new videos coming up, I'm taking a break from Top 3 Tuesday videos. What's up, Captain Algebra? Kenna, forever in our hearts. You crazy, crazy girl. Uh, why do I never get trolls? Captain Algebra gets trolls. I ban the shit out of them. I accidentally ban T Bay or T Belly in the mix. It's like it happened, but I'm not sad about it. You know, it's a thing. Uh, but come on, I gave Captain Algebra that wrench for a reason. I gave Jason that wrench for a reason. No need to use them. <laughs> um, so the next videos, I've taken a break from Top Three Tuesday videos for a while because Jason, uh, you know, hasn't doesn't have a whole lot of time to do them anymore, and I like doing them in tandem with him. So it's not as much fun doing it. You know, just by myself anymore. I like having him to play off of, and you know, we bounce topics back and forth. So he can't do it for a little while. So I'm gonna hold off on him for a while too. So the next video I'm doing is the fourth movies that would make great video games collaboration. Uh, working on it right now. Uh, who do I got on this uh, collab? I got Do You Nerd. I got Linda, aka the Gamer Girl. I got Gaming Off the Grid. Uh, I got Eugene from EC Myers Vids. Um, Foster's Game Reviews, The Ice Pirate, uh, Hungry Garaya, <laughs> um, Max Impact, who else? Uh, Nefar Nefarious Wes. It's awesome. Uh, yeah, there's ten. Every time I do one of these movies that would make great video games collaboration, I get ten other YouTubers to participate. Uh, so, oh, and the Game Beaters. <laughs> So, yeah, this, this one's really big. And then I'm planning on doing a fifth one, and that's going to be the last one in the series. I'm doing that one, and that's it. So anyone who hasn't been participating in any of them prior to this, if you want to, let me know, and I'll set you up for part five. Uh, so thank you for watching. I really appreciate each and every one of you coming here. For the amount of games that I talked about, this is one of the shorter streams I've done in this series so far. That's pretty impressive I'm, i actually have time to actually go and play some games after this <laughs> so i will see you guys next week thanks for coming by again and this is chris the old ass retro gamer signing off thanks for coming i'll talk to you next time